Teresa Freya. Uh, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and my company is TechForum Advanced Casting Technology. Uh, we are primarily platinum casters uh, or high temperature casters. We do a few other metals, but 95% uh, of what we do is platinum. So additive manufacturing of platinum came up probably a decade ago, maybe a little bit longer. And at first it was kind of a wait and see. And I do believe that we're getting to that point um, where if you want to be an early adopter, you better jump on board. The most exciting thing for me is really the material properties that you can create stronger, what appear to be much more resilient alloys through this process. Also just existing alloys, stronger and more resilient just because of the way that the metal is melted and the grain size is dramatically smaller. It's a completely different animal when you look at it in metallurgical terms. It can be the same exact alloy, totally different animal. That's pretty fascinating right there. The other thing is the speed with which you can produce something. We all know that there's many, many steps to a casting process. There's fewer steps to a 3D printed metal. They are still very complex steps, but there's fewer variables that you have to control. When we really understand better the costs of the machines and the powders uh, and how those compare to a casting process, we're going to learn more about where this process is really going to shine. And I do believe it's going to shine for a certain segment of demand for platinum. I don't think it's going to replace castings. I think it's just going to become another tool in the toolbox where it's going to become the first choice. The latest research um, that we did was to compare platinum ruthenium castings to additively manufactured platinum. To do this, we, we brought a machine in-house for printing. And of course, we cast platinum ruthenium here uh, at TechForm every single day. So we've got lots and lots of data, which made this actually a, a very interesting uh, comparative research project. And what we found uh, with the 3D printed platinum was that all of the samples had significant amounts of porosity. So none of it was just, you know, printing 100% dense. Uh, we also uh, were able to demonstrate that all of the porosity that we found in the 3D printed samples hipped out very effectively. So hot isostatic pressing is a great process to heal porosity, not only in castings, but in 3D printed platinum. We were able to demonstrate that um, the mechanical properties were significantly better for the 3D printed platinum than the cast samples. And in fact, one of the properties, it's called yield strength, and yield strength is basically, if you're, if you're taking a, a bar and you're starting to bend it, yield is the point at which that bar is permanently deformed. So it's not going to bounce back anymore. So that's a really important measure of strength. Yield strength in the 3D printed platinum was 93% higher than for the as cast platinum. That was startling to me. Take a jewelry piece, for example. You know, that jewelry piece is not going to move for 93% longer, right? 
It can take more stress. Because of the way that the metal was melted and deposited in layers. I mean, that's it's the same alloy. So that was really huge. And then the other thing, and this might be more interesting for metallurgists, is that as this strength went up, the ductility, the ability to bend without breaking, uh, that stayed the same. And so if you look at steels, base metals, you always have this correlation of strength going up and ductility going down. So the 3D printed platinum behaved in a very unique way, that the strength went up and the ductility stayed the same. And that's remarkable. Maybe it's more remarkable for metallurgical nerds like me, but <laughs> it has real world impact for the consumer and how that piece of jewelry 